What's up guys? I have been testing a lot of video and I think I figured it out and hopefully we will go 10-0 today. We will see, but um, I'm planning to use Mikage a lot today, even though my Mikage isn't in that insane gear. She is just in a basic 4-piece or let's say 5-piece stone skin. I sadly don't have more accessories, so I can't. This might look kind of weird, but it's actually worth it because you do get some extra stats from having the 5 piece set bonus. But I'm gonna heavily go with Wukong today. I, I decided that even though I felt like Sena was super good on like early this year and December, but since I tried her again in the last couple of weeks, I feel like she just, just doesn't work in the meta anymore. And that was despite my like me putting my Xena in my best gear and she was in a very good set. Instead I'm gonna be using Wukong a lot today and he is in like absolute killer gear. And by the way, I always mention this and of course there's some people that don't know about it, but always in, in my video description you will find a link to my Hell Hades optimizer and you can see all of my current builds there, so you, you can see this build and all of my other builds in detail. But I actually played around with a lot of builds. It's not just Wukong. I actually um, I changed my Duchess build. I changed my Angkor kill build a little bit as well. It was in, in big part for um, Classic Arena too, not just Live Arena. But hopefully these builds will work out a bit better here as well. Well, it's not that much, but a little bit. Anyway, you, you, you will see, you will see. My Duchess is a bit tankier, not as fast as before. And my Narses, I mean my Ankorom, is in 6-piece Stone Skin and 2-piece Immortal. It doesn't make that big difference. I'm planning to use her in my Reset defense next week, which will be interesting one. I think my defense will do really well, but we will see about that. It will be maybe a little bit surprising defense for some people, but I will save that for for the next plot push. And I will be streaming it, by the way. I did it on the last one as well, so you're not going to find it on my usual videos. But from now on, I'm going to stream every plot push and I'm going to stream live arena and other stuff on this Friday as well, so make sure to check that out. I think I might do it a thing for now that I stream on Mondays and Fridays, but we will see. That's the plan for now, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna make any promises and there might be more or less streams, we will see. I was a little bit uh, nervous to do the streams and I had some issues why I wouldn't wasn't able to do it, but we got it on Monday, and I guess the next one will be on Friday. Anyway, a bad start. He picked the UDK and Harima. Probably he's planning to go with Wukong or Rotos as well. That's why you would pick those. Mm. Yeah, since Harima does have, or both of them have debuffs, but the uh, Harima passive is super annoying, and the only way I can really counter Harima passive is polymorphing her. So maybe I should go for... Like, I don't really want to pick Rotos. The, the champions that I have in polymorph is like Mikage and uh, uh, Armans, even though they don't have 6-star, but they have accuracy. And then Duchess is the only one. Like, Duchess and Rotos are the only ones with 6-star polymorph. So... Let's go with Duchess. But okay, so on the first battle I'm not really able to go with the strategy that I was actually planning to, but you will see it later on. Basically I'm gonna try to pick more polymorphs than I usually do, and pick a lot of Mikage, especially since usually they pick like double lockout and Armands against me, and if I ban the Armands then I'm gonna fight at least one lockout in most of the battles. And Mikage can kind of get some turns against that. Okay, so he he went with Rotos. 
which makes sense and Mikake ally attack would be good, but of course I'm not really gonna be able to see Zitarotos. He also doesn't have that much polymorph. He doesn't have anybody with 6 star polymorph actually. So maybe I should go with Mikage. I just don't know. <laughs> My other Nugras are not really suited for this. Should I go with... Nah, no way I can do that. It's a hard one. I think I'm gonna go with Wukong and ban the Harima. That's basically what you will see on my next week's reset defense. And what I was testing yesterday that was working for me in live arena. That outside of Mikake, who can change forms and get her cooldowns back against Lockout. But Wukong does have really uh, low cooldowns, only 3 turns. And he can deal with UDK as long as I can stay alive. Ideally I would pick UDK because... It's great synergy with Wukong passive, but with him I can definitely like uh, get through it. With Rotos it's a bit bigger issue because Rotos can weak hit, weak hit against UDK. I mean, I can weak hit against Rotos and that, that might become big issue because if the fight lasts long, Rotos is gonna steal so much HP that my supports can't kill it that easily, but he let us have two nukers, so maybe it's enough. If we get lucky here, we might even be able to kill the Rotos. No, I think I'll open on the Sifi actually. Can we get it done? Oh, nice. I'm kind of surprised that my Mikage was faster than his Sifi, but. I guess it's still a pretty tanky build and surely this guy doesn't have the, the best gear because some people have like 400 speed CV and it's still like 140k HP so that wasn't this guy though. Okay, great start for the video. Let me quickly show you from the optimizer just so that you can see what we're running with but like I said you can find all of these pills on my link in description. <laughs> and that's not like a paid advertisement. El Hades Optimizer is just so good that you need to use it. Let's put it that way. And by the way, I even have a guide about how to use Optimizer to calculate good pills for PvP. So check that out as well. But yeah, we're, we're going with super fast Wukong 251. And I could get this Wukong like 300 speed because I don't have the Faction Guardians. I don't have 6 star Blessing. He could be empowered and get 10 more speed out of that. And then I could also improve the Glyphs a little bit. So he could literally be like 300 speed in this gear with attack boots. But yeah, a, a little bit flex. I mean, if you look at his uh, build, there every, every piece is like a guard-like. The only piece here that isn't that great is the boots, because they miss crit damage. It isn't that big so that the gloves don't have crit rate. And guess what I'm crafting on this Dark Fae rotation? Obviously I'm crafting boots, though I, I've been doing that for a while. It's just, it's not just this time. Uh, what else? I was actually crafting boots last time and I didn't get good attack boots, but I did get great boots on HP scaling uh, champion. It's not the ones that I normally use on my Narses, but it's the one that I put on my Narses for classic arena reset when I make him slower. But I think they have triple crit damage and then one roll on crit rate. So they are like maximum damage build. They just don't have um, speed. Did I show Dutchess? I think I showed Dutchess. No, I didn't, okay. And as you can see, on the, on those uh, gloves I still need to ask end that, but like I said, I shuffled around my gear a little bit. I actually, I changed, changed Dust's build a couple times. I first put her out of bolster in pure stone skin, and I was planning to use her in my classic arena 
with a defense. But I came to the conclusion that after testing a lot, I spent so much games on testing, you wouldn't believe it. Sometimes I'm a bit dumb when I do that, but when I get into testing arena, I just... I, I don't care about the games and I just waste them. But, I mean, I've talked about this before and it's kind of obvious, but because of Narsus A2, ignoring shields and getting double hit on shields, and that's just, not only bolster gives shields, but her A1 always gives shield to herself and the weakest ally in your team. She's actually really like a liability um, in classic arena. Not only does, does her passive not work, but she increases the enemy damage and you even get more buffs. So Narsus might block revive you with the A3. So even with the polymorph, and I would literally use her only for the polymorph, it's not worth using her at this time. So that's why I, I put her in a stone skin to try that. And then I concluded that she sucks and <laughs> I put her back. And I'm going to use Ankara on next reset. Okay, he's going for some kind of speed team. Probably like Charge It and Ronda. We're definitely going to go with... Um, with UDK and Wukong here. I maybe could have picked something else and picked those later. Probably I'm going to go with... Uh, well, okay, let's see what he picks. Oh, okay. Initve. That's interesting. I have to ban the Initve. But outside of that, his team doesn't really look that scary at all. If he if he picks like a triple nuker and he goes with Tronda and bans my second nuker, that might be issue though. So I could basically go anything here. Rotos or Narsus, I think both will work. I could even go with something like uh, Tormin here if I really wanted to. But I think we're just gonna. I think this is just the safest choice, yeah. Could have gone with maybe Mikage instead of Angora, but I feel like Angora is so good that I'll, I'll go with her on this one. He might have actually banned my Mikage if I picked it though. Maybe I maybe I should have picked Mikage here. Mm, yeah, I, I, I should have done it actually. When I was testing yesterday, I was picking Mikage in almost every single fight. But of course, today on the first two fights, I'm not picking her, even though that's kind of the plan for today. Anyway, I was getting a little bit distracted because I was just like talking on Twitch about the. Uh, um, Hydra and how OP Tranda is on Hydra with um, Niklaus raids, I think. Let me double check. With. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's doing live arena now as well. He was doing champion training tournament when I was talking with him. Shout out to uh, Niklaus raids. Anyway. But yeah, even, even with the Yumeko, I mean, he does have the Arbiter 10 meter boost, so we will see about that. But I feel like even with the Yumeko lockout, I will be able to kill this team on Wukong along, al alone. It will take him forever to kill my UDK, even if he were to manage to kill everybody else. Wait, who does he have? Nobody is in Polymorph, okay. Well, I guess. <laughs> I guess I don't have anybody in Polymorph either, but he's not using CC. Um, uh, I can't recall, does Yumeko have lockout right now or not? If Yumeko has lockout, then this is a big... Well, it's not a mistake, but uh, it doesn't help. But if she doesn't have lockout now, okay, good. Often on Wukong, it's not even worth reviving him, because he's gonna <laughs> revive himself at full turn meter and or 100% turn meter and health. But with Ankara it's kind of a bit different, because even though you do lose 
you get a little bit less turn meter than you would otherwise, and you waste the revive. But it does reset the cooldowns, and that's kind of why I like to use Ankara against lockout teams. N not only that, but of course the A1. And and that's why she's gonna get get a slot on my defense team instead of uh, Duchess on the on the next reset. Last time I ran, um, pretty sure I ran both Protoss and Wukong, but I think on next reset I'm just gonna run Wukong without Protoss at all. Protoss is gonna get benched, and that's with Protoss having a 6 star polymorph, which is a huge deal, but even despite that he's getting benched. I was kind of testing different options, and I was kind of almost 50-50 on do I want to use Rotos on the team just for the polymorph or want, do I want to use somebody else but I decided it's better to use Angora. I would I would pay I know I know it's kind of a, not a smart thing to do but I would pay money for Plarium if they would let me switch my six star uh, <laughs> six star blessing from Duchess to Angora since Duchess is basically useless at this point. I know it's kind of personal and it's stupid to come. Should we go with Mika again? No, I'm gonna go with um, UDK and Narthus. It's kind of stupid to complain about the personal stuff all the time, but I do remember super vividly, like, Plarium saying that they don't want to nerf Taras because people got really negative about Eurocrim nerf and they don't like to nerf things anymore and they try to avoid it. But it's gonna happen, do, do they want it or not? And with the release of uh, uh, Narsus, not only did Taras get nerfed a little bit and he's still one of the best champions, even after the massive indirect nerf from Narsus. But every other champion, except Harima, because it doesn't work on her, but every other champion that relies on passive, like Necret and Duchess, two of my best champions, are both completely useless and unviable now, so... Things are always gonna get nerfed, even if it's not directly, and they might as well nerf the most OP things directly, because... Somebody's gonna get sad, this time it was me, but... Anyway... Should we just go with Rotos? I feel like we should go... Rotos, Rotos does have pretty good matchup against... Taras and like... Multiple Reviver teams. As long as they don't have Harima or UDK. But at this point if he does pick Harima, I'm just gonna ban it so... I think we might be able to do this battle. But yeah. I So far I have gotten two champions with 6 star blessing. Duchess and um, Rotos, and it takes me like eight months to get eight months to get one champion, and that's with like um, doing Iron Twins every day and buying buying extra keys on Sundays, and it takes eight months for one champion. That's pretty crazy, and because of the because of the Narsus release. Eight months went went down the drain on Duchess. It, it does sting, sting a lot. In other ga games, or not all games, of course, but in many other games with similar mechanics, there is tokens where you can put the blessing from one champion to another one, because balance changes and it's like it's to be expected. I wish. Uh, I wish Raid would consider it. I mean, if it was up to me, I wouldn't want it to be something that you buy, but instead like some kind of token that you can farm. Let's say you can get one of those every six months or whatever. But we desperately... Well, no, it's not the biggest issue in Raid, let's put it that way, but I wish we had one. Of, of course, Plarium is not going to do it, and I'm not expecting them to do it, because it's going to encourage people to, to buy soul stones and whatever. But they, they give compensation to other stuff, 
and they say that they don't want to nerf things, but they end up doing it anyway, so... Okay, I'm complaining, but we're doing pretty good so far. It's kind of funny because on... I think on my last live arena video, somebody told me in comments that he feels like I have been... And I'm not saying this just to be contrarian, but he said something like he thinks I have been using too much UDK lately, but I think it's the total opposite. I haven't been using UDK enough and I need to rely on UDK more. But somebody else said that I wasn't using Mika game enough and that one I agree with. I should use Mika game more. I often meet the combination of um, Wukong, Mikake, UDK, and probably that's what I'm gonna run today a lot as well. This guy's name is Mad Mushis, and he has the three trophies. I don't really follow this kind of stuff too much. I know some other people in Top Platinum, they know every every account, and if, if an account gets traded, they will know the previous owner and the new owner, even despite the name changing and so on. But I'm kind of confused that he has three trophies and he has Mad in the name. So I'm kind of thinking it's some kind of account from Mad that was sold, but I have no idea which account is that. I, I'm sure somebody in comments will know. Maybe it's not the Mad account, but there isn't that many accounts with three trophies, so most likely it is a Mad account. Okay, th those fights were before. Okay, we're at the three battle win streak, but these are not the worst enemies, to be fair. So. The Mikake strategy is mainly about getting locked out, and then when I meet those teams that have multiple lockouts and force me to play against it, that's where I'm hoping that Mikake will shine. And I was testing it yesterday, and I I want some really good accounts with the Mikake comp. I have to check the video now because not only do I forget to put the recording on, but then I noticed that in my couple recent videos, I often go shower before I do I do live arena. It's not like it's just like a mental thing that I often do live arena on the morning and I take shower before I, I take shower on mornings generally. But then when my hair is still like drying out, it's I have like one strand of hair in like the middle of my face and I don't realize it for two hours and it's super embarrassing. But not not today. I I made some food on the morning as well, and often I take the shower like 30 minutes before before live arena. But now I took it like one hour, so it calmed it calmed down a little bit. I I have like much longer hair than you can see on the videos, by the way. So that's why it can get pretty curly and messy sometimes. Okay, he got the he got the UDK and pro might go with Wukong as well. I think we're definitely gonna go with Mikake now. Like we're gonna go with Narcissus. Oh, let's pick a let's pick Mikake first so that we have the Polymorph first in the team order. But that way we can kill Rotos with the ally attack potentially, and he does weak hit against. Mikake as well, so there's that. Okay, that's an Orc team. Maritska and Arbiter is not a typical combination that you see. Now I'm also thinking, should I just go with Tormin? I actually... W one of my bucket lists since I kind of... Uh, 
I guess I'll do that. Let's go with Mitra and Thormin. My Thormin doesn't have bestest of gear, to be honest, so this might be a giant mistake and I might regret it. We will see, but he doesn't have anybody in 6-star Polymorph and the team does look so, super juicy for Thormin, but let me show you what gear I have on Thormin. He actually doesn't have the gloves empowered because I have my Staltus geared as well. Yeah, this is what Tormin is on, and it's kind of decent build. It's not like this is my second best defense noob build, so not all of the best stuff. But the biggest issue is that the gloves don't have crit damage. I think we're yeah we're gonna ban the Eva. Uh, I think we're yeah. Let's go with the HP aura. So, Thormin already is like notoriously low damage and he doesn't have defense on helmet and no crit damage on gloves, which is a huge deal. Also no, like doesn't have three star or four star blessing and so on. And he already has low multiplier. So this might be an issue, we, we will see. Okay, but um, no, no, this is gonna go well. If I don't get reaction blocks, Rotos is just gonna die instantly. Okay, didn't. Um, what happened there was that Mitrala, it's kind of unlucky that the Mitrala A1 second hit goes to whoever, and it accidentally went to the Maritska and they got block damage. I guess that, that could have worked in my favor if they got, uh, they could have got them um, frozen for that. Uh, do I want to put the... I guess I'll do it, yeah. He can just cleanse this hex, but then again... He can also literally get uh, frozen... Frozen from cleansing the hex, so let's hope that happens. Let's say the, let's save the A3 for next turn. Or no. No, let, let's not save it. I just think that he's gonna claim it, but that's okay. Okay, that's a weird, weird turn of events. Oh, he's not using the cleanse. Yeah, it's not looking that good. I mean, Narcissus is dead. We don't have any revive, and he still has the marriage capacity. So we, I guess, we pretty much lost it at this point. It's pretty safe to. Safe to say. I don't think my Tormin is going to be able to kill this alone. Might have been able to do that if we had... Uh... Um, uh, Armand's on the team, but ne definitely not just by himself. We don't also really have multi-hits because... What? Okay, the animation just trolled me. I didn't use the stun because I... I thought the Rotos was petrified, but apparently he wasn't. I, I could have stunned the Rotos. Okay, we lost. Should it have gone with Tormin? I knew Tormin was a mistake. He just made sense, but he doesn't have enough damage. If I had Cruelty, I would definitely have enough damage. I mean, if I had 6-star Blessing with Cruelty, I would be able to kill it, but... Not without that. Even the crit damage with the Klaus wouldn't have been enough, to be fair. He did have the marriage, go, so... I mean, some people even run stone, uh, stun set Tormin as their, one of their two Nougars against marriage teams, but they're also like running lockout and so on, and they are actually able to have enough damage that way, but not me. By the way, I'll make a video tomorrow about the, the new blessings. I was kind of late with the party when I saw the notifi notification about it, like yesterday evening. But I'll make a video about it tomorrow, about the 
blessings and overall blessings as well. Do I want to go with uh, Rotos or Wukong? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we will go with the Wukong this time, but let's save it for the last pick. Tronda? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I think I think even even when it's with Tranda, but I think we're gonna go with Rotos because Wukong has horrible matchup against Taras due to his passive, and he is running double reviver, so we would lose all of the Wukong damage if we hit the Taras a couple times. By the way, at this point, I'm really, I'm really hoping to just uh, get a lot of legendary champions on my future shards and get some dupes of crappy champions because, like my, um, for instance, on Mikage, on both Mikage, well, Mikage, Knight Revenant, um, Shadow King, um, what's it called? Barbarians? Is it barbarians? Barbarians. In none of those factions I have faction guardians, and I think in two, two of them I'm pretty close. I think on Knight Revenant I'm only like 2 out of 10, but getting the 10 speed on those factions would be a pretty big deal. Like getting it on Mikage or Armands would be a huge upgrade. I would definitely win some fights purely because of that. Um. I think we should open with the ally attack instead of the half strip. We might be able to kill the... Well, no, no way we're gonna kill it, but let's do it anyway. Let's get the attack buff. Oh, we did kill it. Oh, nice. Damn, my my Rodos can actually pre hit pretty hard <laughs> with the attack buff. 62k on A1 is actually huge, co considering that she also had shields and strengthen and defense buff, so that was like way more than 62k. Th that was a massive hit on A1 skill. Also, I need to chaos dust multiple pieces of Mikage gear, but I do want to... Oh, that was a misclick. I do want to make her tanky as well. I don't want to go full speed on her, because <laughs> I'm not gonna be the fastest anyway, so I'm trying to go with the balanced build. Okay, I misclicked on the Rotos, but let's at least make sure to stun the Tranda. Okay, if we proc Helm Smasher, we definitely can kill the Angora with the A2. Come on, give it. Oh, okay, no. That's what we did. We did 62k with the A1, true shield strength and defense buff, and we did 75k with the A2. That's how huge difference the Helm Smasher proc makes. Let's hit the Taras with our Dutchess so that um, when the Stone Skin ends now, he's not gonna hopefully get the double damage on Dutchess with A2, and he's only gonna do half of it. Which he does if he has um, more attack than my Dutchess. Okay, we're good, we're good.
but yeah, I I tried many different builds on Dart, uh, on well on on Dartus too, but on Mikake, and I've been using her, but I've always been using her, but she has never been one of my main champions, let's say. Just because I kind of feel like um, I'm not the fastest, I don't have a CV, and enemy team is always picking it and. They have a CV that goes before me and puts the immunity buff and she's not able to stun the enemy team on the first turn like they often do against me and she might die before she gets to do the stun after the buff strip but the meta has kind of shifted and people are running a little bit different teams and lots of lockout and I feel like she's more useful to me than she was a while ago and also because I need I need more polymorph in this meta as you may have noticed this is kind of intentional strategy that I've been doing but usually if they pick Armands or if they have the first pick I'm, I'm gonna go with Duchess and often, if I have the first pick, I'm gonna go with Armands, and I'm gonna end up using Ankora instead of Duchess, but I have Duchess in Polster, Ankora isn't, and Duchess has the Polymorph, so I got the Polymorph to potentially counter the Armands, and they don't have the Narses, so they can't do double hit against me due to the Bolster, and this way I'm kind of getting best out of both worlds. I might still pick double um, double reviver, but I could go with Mikage or something else. I think we're actually we're definitely gonna go with Mikage here for sure. He would probably pick it if I didn't, to be honest. Okay, he has Lockout and Armand, so now we might might get to see the good benefits of Mikage. And I guess we're gonna go with Rotos, yeah. There's really nothing else for me to pick. I guess I could... Oh, he's by the way going with only one Nougar. I guess I could go with Staldus, but um, nah. And uh, this is one of those things that... He has a speed team with lockout and armans. If I, if I, um, if I don't ban the armans, and I, I ban the Wukong, I will probably lose. That, that's how OP this kind of combination is. So we're still gonna go with armans ban, and I'm sure he's gonna ban the UDK. But we do it despite knowing that. Yeah. But I, I think I can beat this team. You never want to <laughs> underestimate those Wukongs unless you have Harim on your team. He can always one-shot the entire team if he just gets one A2 at the right time. But I think I can take this. I have two Nukers and um, even the Mikage, so I will get some damage out despite the lockout. And his team isn't that tanky. And I do have double polymorph, which I generally, oh, no, triple polymorph, which I generally don't have. But like I said, Mikake does have accuracy, so she doesn't really need the six star polymorph. And I changed Rotos to polymorph just uh, two days ago. I've been getting, uh, <laughs> getting tired of losing, so I'm kind of desperate to. Ah, we got polymorph. I'm kind of desperate to come up with new stuff and often it kind of feels like 
there isn't anything to do, but I think I finally figured it out that um, the meta changed and it's time for me to change as well. To be honest, I mean, I've always had my best success in PvP in Raid when we have new champions that change meta, even though I never had had those champions myself, but when there was new meta and people didn't know what to do, those were the times that I was able to come up with new strategies to counter them and get my best results. I still, my defense is, is still not good enough, so not gonna get as high as my records right now, but who knows, it, it might change at some point. Like I remember I was doing super well on the Cupidus meta, and I didn't have Cupidus. Everybody was using Cupidus in both offense and defense. That's how OP he was at that time. And before that I was running Tranda offense, which was kind of meta at that time. And stuff like Ramondu and AoE Nuker were, were the way to go back then. But then, then I kind of figured out the setup that I could actually actually farm the Cupidus teams with pretty much my defense team and using like Dodges and Rotos against them. I was using like Dodges, Rotos, Mitrala and Necret against the Meta Cupidus teams and I was actually able to farm them super fast and back then Cupidus teams were so strong that the to top Cupidus teams were mostly winning on defense because people um, hadn't figured it out yet and Varium had not implemented like Baron buff and Georgid so th they were like countered a little bit afterwards but yeah new meta is always an opportunity so even if it might suck that you don't have like Trixia and Galatir maybe you don't even have Narcissus like I do but it's always an opportunity. I'm, I'm hoping that next Classic Arena reset my Wukong defense is gonna tear people up. It's definitely gonna lose, but I'm hoping it's gonna have like 50% win rate because people are not expecting to like lose against it. That's my hope, but we will see. Okay, doing, doing pretty good so far. Also, if you're watching this video at 40 minutes, consider subscribing to my ch channel and joining my Discord. I have been shielding super hard for my Discord lately, because I'm trying to make it a uh, go-to place to talk about Arena in Raid, because there really isn't any public Discord that is dedicated for Arena or like pushing Platinum and high level PvP, so... Okay, let's see what's happening in reddit today do we have anything interesting let's just take the one tap so i can close it later yeah i think um at least last two sundays i only got the tokens as well, it sucks. Wait, what is this? Sap fanboys? I would definitely say... I would say I'm a sap fanboy as well. Uh, Rotos without UDK or Harima, that's interesting. And he picked... 
he picked my uncle. This is kind of funny. He picked my uncle, and I'm gonna pick the UDK. So we're both kind of uh, screwing with each other. Mm. Do I go with the Mikage? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's do it. Even though he only has the Armons with uh, the bus, probably he's gonna pick more, and the ally attack might be really good against the Rotos too. As he's so gonna pick Lockout anyway, I would be shocked if he doesn't pick Lockout. Okay, let's see this ready thread. Saf, I hope this leak scrapped from Plarium's alpha server will cheer you up after yesterday's overly exaggerated drama. Boom is right now one of the best CCs around, whether you nerf or not. Okay, I have no idea what this is referring to, to be honest. I didn't see Saf's yesterday's video. Saf is definitely my... Uh, my most watched uh, raid YouTube channel, for sure, not that close, but I didn't see the yesterday's video yet. So literally no idea what he's talking about, I guess something happened. <sighs> okay, I screwed myself, I was too slow to kick. I was, I was thinking... I was gonna pick Staldus, but I couldn't find Staldus. And of course it's like a couple spaces below here for some reason. Not, not oh I guess it has the wrong attack. Behind those epic champions, and that's why <laughs> that's why I didn't pick in time. If he doesn't yeah, okay, I have to surrender this. That sucks. Anyway. That's my mistake. That's the million time it happens, but it is what it is. Wait, wait. Let me let me fix the tax on the on the style so that doesn't happen again. Yeah, I, I was gonna go with Stalos because I felt like Wukong would have a, not been good there. Wait, so it doesn't show if it's like number one build, but it does show first if it's in arena build. That doesn't make any sense, to be fair. I'm 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 saying that's half Plarium's fault. I mean that's my fault, but that doesn't make any sense that it wasn't displayed first. Anyway. Okay, this is an interesting that I like the topic at least. Let's see what Oh okay. They mentioned Sap and Noob, so I think it's probably related to the thing that the other guy was talking about. Now I need to watch the video afterwards because I I don't know what it was referring to. I I hope this guy explains it a little bit. Apparently, unpopular opinion, a balanced game is a good thing. Content creators like Saf, Noob and Drock get buried by the community when they are calling for champs, balance, light nerves, and bug fixes. Okay, I feel a little bit offended by that, not gonna lie. I mean, I would definitely say that there's nobody in raid content creators that <laughs> that has called for nerves as much as me, so I don't know if this guy hasn't heard about me, but I kind of feel a little bit left out there. I, I definitely whine about nerves the most in the game, for sure. I've been speaking about it in CC chat ever since I got there, and I've been I've been speaking about it to all of these three, especially especially to Drock. I've I've been speaking about it, so not that I interact with them for like years, but we often talk about the PvP nerves in the CC chat, started by me, so. Okay, let's pick the Wukong anyway, so... Which, in my opinion, is just ridiculous. These guys are proponents of getting rid of mechanics that literally break the game, which, in my opinion, is a good thing. But I get some people spend money on these champs slash resources, and it feels horribly 
when they nerf these champs. By the way, I was just speaking about the fact that um, my eight months of... Um, should we go with Necrot? No. My eight months of Hydra grinding... Uh, not Hydra, Iron Twins grinding went to complete waste because Narsus was released and it made Necret and Duchess, my two best champions in the game, completely unusable on high level arena in classic arena. I mean in live arena you can use them because I just pick Narsus, but in classic arena defense they're completely unviable because Narsus is the most popular and basically the best nougar in classic arena offense. And both of those champions are a liability on your team. And by the way, Rostos is also useless against Narsus. So not only those two, but three of my best champions were all made completely useless by Narsus' release. Even though he was intended to counter Taras, who is still good because he was so OP. And I'm sad about it, but I get it. I'm, I'm still okay with that. But they should also nerf other things. That's my point. Anyway, we'll get back to that thread after the battle. Otherwise, I get too distracted like I just did a while ago. But I think champion balance and nerves is good. Even if it sometimes sucks for you, it definitely has sucked for me just recently. But it's better for the game. You should just suck it up. And like uh, back in the day when Taras was too OP, he's still one of the best, by the way. But Taras totally needed to be nerfed, and right now I would say that Grixia, Galatir are lockout champions, they should be nerfed. And it is what it is, feel, feel free to disagree, but that's what I think about it. And I think if we had a lot of buffs and nerfs, or if they just didn't release OP champions, but okay, like mistakes are gonna happen. But if they make them, and they correct them, then we will be, have a much more competitive and active PvP scene, because I can guarantee you, as somebody that has been bar part of it for many years, that two, two or three years ago, Classic Arena scene was much more active and competitive than it is right now. Right now it's only the same couple whales finishing top 20 every week, and the same couple of clans, but a few years ago there was many other clans as well that would compete in arena. Of course, even then, like Mad and IPR were the best ones. But there was many players in random other clans that were very like would win sometimes and would be competitive, and you will see lots of different names in top 20, and not just the same couple accounts that are mega whales and all use the exact same team in offense and defense you could run some random weird teams that you came up yourself and because there was not a single team that was the best in defense and people ran all kinds of stuff you didn't need to be able to just beat the one meta team like Taras, Mariska, UDK, Sifi but you had a selection of different teams that you could battle and you only needed to be able to beat one type of good team and you would be able to rank high if you played it smart but now you need to beat one specific team and like few variations of the same specific team that's the only thing that matters because couple champions are so much better than anything else that nobody will run anything but that one thing if they have those champions and it didn't used to be like that that's how i have my red avatars and that's how so many more people were in the PvP a few years ago, and why many of them lost interest now. Like, Drog, for instance, himself has said many times that he only plays live arena, he doesn't care about classic arena because of the time slot, but also because the meta sucks and there's no, like, variation or, like, um, there's not, there's not things to, like, come up with and work it. I mean, of course, there's always a little bit things that you can do, but not a lot. Anyway. I'm getting so mad that uh, I'm starting to, starting to tear up.
I mean, two years ago, I mean, two years ago, if you you were able to come up with a strategy that Gala was a top tier champion in PvP, that's how good the meta was. And don't tell me that that was a bad thing, because it's not like everybody was using Gala. It was literally just me and then a couple other people after I started running it, but it was viable for maybe like a month before I figured it out. And even after it worked for me, it wasn't like everybody was running Gala. People were running all sorts of different things and that was way better than right now. Even though I have Narses and I have a good offense team, relatively, but it will still be more fun if like, like literally on the last classic arena reset, I only ran and for like long time, I only ran my Narses offense team, one specific offense team against every single team. And it's not like that hasn't happened before, but on many other metas I have been like uh, running multiple different teams against different setups that the enemies might run. But right now it's basically only worth running some form of Narses offense, or you could also run Bomb offense and Georgie offense, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's continue with the thread. It's a super long one, but this is an interesting one, so let's read it. However, there is ways to do this well, where you don't nerf champs into ground. And by the way, the champions that have got their nerfs, Rotos, Paras, Tormin, I'm gonna forget some names, but li literally like, I, I don't even recall a single champion that has been nerfed by Plarium, and became unviable afterwards, because they are so scared to nerf things, and some champions are so much better than other stuff, that every time they nerf something, it's still good afterwards. Just saying. If you if you do a ridiculous massive nerf on Galatir, Rixia and Lazarus, or Georgid, they will all still be top tier meta, even if you nerf them massively. I guarantee you that. Like Tranda nerf, nerf, like Tranda nerf her to the point where she is still top five Hydra damage dealer, or even top damage dealer, but make sure it's within twenty percent of the next best strategy, not two thousand percent. By the way, I like this. I kind of, um, I pretty much said the same thing about my video about the game balance that I made recently, but I said something to do the effect that. I think it was on the video we did with Rock, maybe, but that they just need to look at them top champions, like let's say top five champions, and they don't have to like nerf them based on or choose the champions to nerf based on what Reddit said or what I said or what the rank one finisher of next classic arena said. They should look at the numbers, see that okay, if this champion has <laughs> has 30% higher win rate than anything else in live arena, or if Taras is picking is picked 100% of time in classic arena defense, maybe it's OP, maybe it's insanely OP, and maybe you just literally, on some of those champions you need to nerf specific skills, like marriage capacity should be nerfed and Taras scaling with the HP not getting reduced by lost HP, that should be nerfed, his multiplier should be nerfed, but you could literally just like look at the numbers that okay, this champion is this person too much represent represented. <laughs> I can't say that word. And okay, let's just nerf its damage by five percent, and then let's see how much it reduces the win rate or the usage rate. They could literally do a little bit nerf, see how it affects it, and go from there. I think looking looking at the numbers and going strictly by that instead of just the popular opinion, I think that would actually be the way to go, and I think that would be the most fair way to go, and they will get least amount of backlash by it. They could literally say that, look, we have numbers here, 100% of top 30 classic arena defense for the past year has used Taras and Maritska in defense. We need to nerf them, they are too OP. Nobody would argue with that if they showed the numbers and put, put them into context, because there is some champions that are ridiculously better than everything else. Like, I'm not a 
Hydra God. I don't follow the meta, but I'm pretty sure like the 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 best non non uh, non Tranda team is like with uh, it's some kind of team with Carol and Ala attack, and I think that's like I'm just throwing random number, but I think that's like like hundred times worse than the best Tranda team. So something like that. It's not even close. Like the second best team and the best team in Hydra are nowhere close to each other's. Like the Tranda team is like infinitely better than anything else. Anyway. I guess this guy is talking about mostly Hydra, but I think it applies to both PvP and Hydra. Though he did he did mention Drock and I don't think Drock cares about Hydra meta, so maybe he's talking about both of them. Now my main gripe is how Plarion handles the wall thing. Ideally they will not release broken mechanics at all, test them truly, use test server as an actual test server rather than a marketing tool and fix these broken mechanics and unbalanced champions before they are released. I agree, but um, I don't think they would do that. I don't, and I kind of get that they wouldn't want to take the subjective opinion of like content creators or any random people. I do know that there's people that have this test server access and I don't think they are doing a good job to be honest, but it is what it is. I wish I could be able to give them feedback. I will definitely work freely for them and try to give them uh, honest, in my opinion, honest good feedback if they if they would let me breed as champions. But I get why they wouldn't they couldn't count on that as an objective opinion and they don't want to risk people to leak stuff. And because of that, I don't think they would ever consider this and instead they should just go with what was being taught here, that they should just look at the numbers and the usage rates and the win rates and go from there. Actually fix these mechanics quickly. As soon as CCs or the community find them, well, actually I need to, where is it? I need to, uh, where can you like it? Let's like this quickly. This is a good thread. I like it. Um, communicate the balance change immediately so that people don't sink resources in the comps or champions and then fix them in the next patch. I agree. I mean, the same thing has been said many times in CC chat, mostly by me, that they should do nurse every month. They should do them con constantly. And it's not like they need to nerf dozens of champions. They literally need to nerf like the five most OP champions. And the game balance is like almost fixed at that point. It's not like there's hundreds of broken champions. It's just few champions that are much better than rest. And if they just do small nerfs on them consistently, the balance would be way better. Better late than ever. Just rip Band-Aid off and fix the damn game. If it's in the best interest of the long, long, I don't think that's right. Long activity of the game or overall player experience, then just do what you got to do, because not fixing this stuff just leads to all of the competitive game modes being futile and no fun. Big problem, and half the PvE content being trivial, not nearly as bad, but still problematic. I agree. Stop nerfing things into the ground when they do it. I don't think they have ever done it, to be honest. Slightly nerf balance changes that remove broken mechanics and or imbalance, but ensure that champ strategies are still viable. What he said here at the earlier, I would again point out to it that make like th this part um, nerf nerf grinder to the point that it's between. 20% of the next best thing or something like that. I think that's the that's the way that they should go. They can literally look at the numbers and balance it that way. But somebody somebody correct me. Like I don't think they have ever nerfed any champion into the ground. Come at me. What what champion what champion was OP that they nerfed to the ground? And I know somebody's gonna get triggered by this, but no, Urogrim isn't a big deal. Urogrim was epic champion that was able to solo dungeons and he still can do it but not as well and he's a great epic champion. It wasn't that big deal. I know I know people are gonna hate me for it, but 
that's what I said back then also, and that's what I say to this day. If you want to go look at my Reddit uh, history, you will find that I literally made a parody post <laughs> about the Urokrim nerf, because I found it stupid, and it was like an ironic post. Many people thought I was real, but you can literally tell that I'm trolling, and it, it was a big meme, but I literally said that to people's face, like the week that Urokrim nerf happened, but any or literally the day that Urokrim nerf happened, but anyway. Now I get why Saf is getting Fury, because the focus is on a PvE champion that helps new players easily one key clan boss, which is the most important milestone for a new player. Okay. I think I think that's it. Uh, let's focus on the arena. That was super long thread. I think we got wait, gold chest. I think we got through most of it, so I don't care about the elaborating on the trend that much. Okay. Nothing with speed. Six star speed substance. Okay. Anyway, if you didn't care about that monologue, just skip it. Maybe I'll put a timestamp so you can skip it if you want to. Okay, let's see. Let's see his uh, bucket list of things to be nerfed, and maybe I'll disagree there. In my opinion, these are all all things that should be fixed or should have been fixed months or years ago to promote balance, longevity, and just overall better game. Is it longevity or longevity? I don't know. I'm a foreigner. Maybe I'm wrong. Tranda A2, sure. Yumeko resetting herself, agreed. Infinite shield mechanics. Uh, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a strong opinion about it. I guess I don't really know. I. You, you tell me in comments, I don't care about that. Yannicka Buck, of course. Um, yeah, let's get those. There is Dominance in Arena. It was fixed a little bit. I still think Marit's capacity needs to be nerfed. I have literally offered this opinion many times in the content creator chat. But how you need to balance Maritska is actually pretty simple. Or there's two ways to do it, but... You need to nerf her passive. The issue is that Maritska has no cooldown with her passive and revives her team with a 75% turn meter. Not full, but 75% turn meter. And that is too much because when you pair her with another reviver or just any looker or whoever, when they get revived at so high turn meter, they are almost certainly gonna get a turn before the enemy team after you just died and you revived everybody with passive skill that doesn't take any timing or skill. And then if you have a reviver, they're just gonna revive Maris and you get an infinite loop. It's stupid. All of her other skills are insanely good as well, so... It's too good. Uh, wait. I think we might go with Necrot this time. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with Necrot. He has to pick an ogre. I don't have to pick you. Yeah, let's do an accurate, yeah. So how you how you can balance Maritska, and she will still be one of the best champions in the game. There's two options. Have a cooldown on the revive. You can decide. I think three to five turns cooldown is fair. I would prefer five turns, but assuming that Plarium would accept my proposal, they probably would go for three turns because they want to keep her OP. Um, hmm, let me think about this. Should I, I still kind of want to ban the Harima. Yeah, let's do it. The other way, you can have a cooldown on the passive, or it doesn't revive with turn meter. I know that might not sound enough for some people, but the big part about the passive, like, is those two things together, and if you remove one of them, it will be much more reasonable, and if it doesn't revive your team at high turn meter, then it's gonna be like Duchess Revive. And how many times have you fought against Duchess or used your own Duchess? And she revives the team, and then you just kill them before they get a turn. That's more that's much more reasonable and feasible than Merit Scar reviving at 75% turn meter with no cooldown. 
I guess we will find out in this battle. Though to be fair, both both uh, Narses and Rotos have an excellent matchup against Marichka, and that's I mean that that's the reason why we're using them in the first place because many other things like normal AOE nukers like if I was using my Staldos, I would never be able to kill this team. I wouldn't have enough damage, and if like after five minutes of battle I would kill the Marichka once. She will just get revived and I will never be able to finish this guy off. But of course Rotos does get extra turns so he's gonna be able to get through it that way. And Narsis also does get extra turn so I have a little bit more options here. Oh, I need to take a breather after all of that ranting. Yeah, I'm just gonna play it safe. I think, um, actually we will see. I probably wouldn't be able to do it. I kind of want to spam A once and get the Rotos A3 back. But I have double nuker, so... She's just gonna die. and She's not gonna use her own skills. She's gonna save them until after she gets revived. And if I'm not able to kill Maritska right now with Rotos A3, which looks like I'm not able to, She's gonna re revive Sifi and Sifi is gonna revive her and we're gonna get the issue like I just said that they get the infinite loop and it's too OP combination. Like I said, I know some people are gonna think that just nerfing the turn meter would be nowhere near enough and if it was up to me I would nerf Maritska more but Plarium wants to keep it strong I think if we just remove the turn meter boost, that would be good enough for me. It's not what I want, but she would be more reasonable. It would go a long way, let's put it that way. Okay, but we <laughs> we won it. I mean, this is not the hardest Maritska team I'm gonna meet. I think... We did the one guy that we lost to, and th this guy obviously doesn't count, but the one battle that we did lose against, it was against Maritska team, and we obviously didn't have enough damage with Tormen, even though we kept, we kept freezing her team, but we just didn't have enough damage. Like, I wanted to nerf the passive, but it's not like Maritska's other skills are not insanely good, and I would say that the a1 on both Taras and Maritska should actually be nerfed as well. They kind of have a bug. It's kind of like how Taras scales with original max HP and not your current max HP, like any other HP scaling champion except him. Both Taras and Maritska A1 passives kind of work differently than any other passive, that usually they are unique, but if you do Taras, uh, if you do Maritska A1, then multiple Taras is obviously gonna join the ally attack. That's OP, it shouldn't work that way. It's very niche, it doesn't really affect live arena or anything else but uh, classic arena offense, generally. But it is a broken thing that should be fixed. For instance, if you have multiple Maritskas in your team, they are... Um, they are not gonna rock passive, only one of them will. And maybe I get this wrong because it's so, so long time ago when Cupidus was meta. But I'm pretty sure if you have multiple Cupidus in the team, only one of them will proc the A1 because people were not running double Cupidus. Don't don't quote me on that one. Correct me if I was wrong because I don't have Cupidus. I'm pretty sure you, you can proc multiple. Cupidus at the same time with the Venus passive. Okay, uh, I think we're still gonna go with the... Rotos. 
If I go with like Staltos now and he picks insanely tanky team, that's not gonna go well. Like if he picks Maritzka for instance. But does this guy have Maritzka? I could go with Necret and Staltos and that might work against some. Let's try it, let's try it. I guess I still have possibility to, to last pick Rotos, even though I kind of probably... If I go with Rotos, I would have rather picked Ankora instead of Necrot, but Staltos might work against this team. Wait, was there anything left in that thread? <laughs> this is a super, super long thread and I talk about it a lot. Sorry for those people that don't care, but I care a lot, so this is kind of interesting topic for me, to be honest. Okay, Hellcat. Uh, there's no way we have to go with Trotos, sadly. I mean, I would go with Wukong, but he, I can't ban the Harima. I have to go for the Arman's ban, sadly, so we have to go with Trotos. It's a very hard team, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm expect expecting to lose the time getting outmatched pretty hard. Now here are some other things that will be widely unpopular, but were also unbalanced and an argument could be made that it made the game worse. Geomancer... Okay, so I know a little bit about Geomancer, though I forget the details because I'm not a math guy, but uh, I think what happened with Geomancer is that there was like some kind of issue that I think he was proking the Warmaster at start or Chant Slayer or whatever, and he was way too OP because of that for Hydra or Clan Boss or whatever. And then they like nerfed it, but then they created another issue that is... Uh, um, reflected damage doesn't get mitigated by defense or something and it kind of made it oh, I think they they put a fixed damage on the reflect on I don't remember which one either clan boss or hydra but then they made it like OP on anything else because it um, it isn't mitigated by defense I don't recall exact details but that's what happened if you ask uh, staff or somebody that is more into that stuff they will be able to tell you the details but basically geomancer had like a bug or he had bad design and then they fixed that thing and created an created another bug slash oversight however you want to phrase it it kind of dep depends on your narrative i guess Uh, okay, Seer being the only way to speedrun ways for three years, I don't think that matters anymore. Seer isn't even the best way to clear ways. I think it used to be double um, Kalvalax, but there might be something even, even better at this time. I don't follow, follow this stuff, so I don't think that one matters at all. I have double Kalvalax, by the way. I just... I really don't care about competing for the dungeon speed records. It's not like I'm farming them anyway, and I don't want to put my best gear for some PvE builds and miss out on them in arena. Okay, UDK ruining early game in arena. Not just early game. I mean, UDK is very, very tough in all parts of the game, but it kind of <laughs> it brings us back to the point that I made earlier that. Varium specifically said that they don't want to nerf Taras because people that pulled Taras would be happy, uh, would be sad about that. But they wasted eight months of my Iron twin, Twins farming by nerfing uh, Duchess and also made my three best champions with my biggest investments, including Rotos, who also has six star blessing because of that. Rotos, Necret, Duchess, my three best champions on my account that doesn't have other good champions apart from those, except like 
Narses and Armands that are new. Those are my best champions. Three of them got nerfed in one patch. And two of them are the only two champions that I farmed 6 star blessing for. Because it takes me 8 months to do it. Both of them are unviable. I mean, Protoss is still... They're both viable in live arena. Both completely unviable in classic arena. Let's put it that way. And guess who am I gonna go next? Guess who is my next... Uh, next uh, six star champion. T take take a long hard guess. Which one am I am I gonna go next for? Obviously, because he's right now in this current meta, he's definitely my best champion in defense. Obviously, I'm gonna get six star blessing on him next. Now, imagine if next eight months or I guess like four months because I'm halfway in. If my eight months of farming the six star blessing. On this champion, I also get ruined and UDK becomes worthless. That's three out of three of my champions with six star blessing becoming unviable because nerfs or indirect nerfs. That sucks, but I'm okay with that as long as you also nerf other stuff. But there's always gonna be somebody sad about this stuff. I'm super sad about my best champions. Like, I barely have any void champions at all on my account. Like, let me show you. I have played the game for 5 years, more than 5 years, like 5 years and uh, 5 years and f uh, three, 5 years and 4 months at this point, something like that. Like, I, I think literally like that. Or like, plus w 1 week more, like, I have played Raid for 5 years, 4 months and 1 week, something like that. This is all of the world champions that I have. As you can see, most of them are fusions or guaranteed champions. And Narthus what was the guaranteed pool, but I did well for him for whatever or whatever. But um of those the few voids that I have pulled, and I've had very bad luck with voids. Almost all of them are PD pools, except a couple of them. But yeah, I have gotten three necrets and he sucks. He's completely unviable. He will never be viable again because of Narthus. And that sucks. It makes me sad. And somebody's gonna be sad, so why can't we nerf other stuff as well? Anyway, it's a bit personal for me, but... Somebody's gonna be sad about whatever balance they do. So they might as well do balance and not just... Like, screw some people over and not others. And let's be honest, Necret was good. Necret was never anywhere close as good as Taras or Maritska. He, he was meta. Kind of at one time, but he wasn't like maybe like 10 people out of top 30 used him or even less. Nowhere like Taras and Marichka, so. And guess what? Taras is still being used after release of Narsus, and nobody's running Necret or Dutchess because those are unviable, but Taras was so good that even after Narsus release, he's still used and one of the best. No, not just used, but one of the best champions in the game. So t time to nerf other stuff as well, is, is what I'm saying. Even if it might not sound that way, but what I'm saying is that we need to nerf everything that is OP, not just the things that we like or <laughs> the champions that are not voids or whatever. Okay, he got the white tour. I guess we're gonna go with the Wukong UDK strategy this time, probably. Oh, hmm. I do have my Dutchess in bolster. I don't think we can pick it. I wish he didn't early pick Angora because I definitely would have would have picked it even if he got the Narsus, but uh, what do I pick now? Oh, he took the Narsus anyway. Okay, we're definitely gonna go with Mika and Wukong. Wait, maybe I should pick Helicat instead of Mika. Like the only way that I get screwed now because I picked the Wukong is if he has Lazarus, and as long as he doesn't have Lazarus. I can ban the 
you may go and be Kelly Cat and we should be good. Okay, let's go with this. Please don't have Lazarus. I pray, please don't have Lazarus. Harima would... Okay, yeah, Harima would be bad, but Lazarus would be way worse than this, so okay. Yeah, I knew it. It's not like he was gonna ban one of my nukers with the, both Armands and Helicat being in the battle. Now, we don't have any uh, reviver in team, so it's not like we're gonna survive forever or anything like that. We're still pretty uh, squishy. And we need to end it pretty fast, so it's still an uphill battle. But if I if I can... Um, I do have Polymorph now on Rotos, so if I can get the Polymorph, Polymorph on the Harima, or if I can kill it early on, it only takes one A2 on Wukong and we can win. It's very niche, because I need to get rid of the Harima passive, but if I'm able to do that, then I win, but otherwise I'm just gonna die pretty fast because there's no revive and he does have two of them, so... Yeah, I think we, we're gonna open with the A, uh, A3. <laughs> that can do the A2, that would be waste, because the A2 would do like 40k damage and it, it would be game over for me. Wait, wait. The Datsis is kind of low HP. I might be able to kill it with A2 if I get Helm Smasher Rock, maybe. Ah, uh, kind of close. I don't know if that was with it or not. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it was. Oh, and the Helicat is Nuker too, by the way. He is in Nook build, but it isn't the best. I recently kind of downscaled his build a little bit to put on other champions. Since he's kind of getting cocked in the current meta, and I'm not using him a lot, to be honest, like, like I did some time ago. People used to, like, Cry about me and DM me about uh, uh, Helicat, <laughs> but those days are long gone and they can easily counter him, so... Those were better times. Uh, after the Gala era... No, okay, Vogot era was nice too, but after Gala era and Vogot era, definitely the best time I've had in... This game is when when people were complaining about my helicat every other match. When the when the Taras owners were getting mad that there was actually something else that uh, something that could survive their goddamn Taras if uh, if they didn't big champions to counter my helicat, which they totally could have, but it wasn't that common at the start and people didn't counter it or. I last picked Helicat, and in that meta there wasn't that many popular buff strippers and block block, de block buffs debuff champions. Okay, it's kind of risky, but I think we might be able to kill the Harima with A3 if we quit. Okay, of course we didn't. Nice. I've been holding on to that Wukong A2 for very long, and pretty sure Rotos is gonna die very soon and if I'm not gonna be able to execute the A2 before that then Wukong is not gonna be able to solo this team uh, do I even want to go for the Harima kill I might not be able to kill it but actually I'm not gonna kill it because I'm gonna weak it at even if it's that low, but I don't think I would want to do it anyway, even if I might be able to kill it, because it's just gonna get revived before my Rotos gets a turn. Okay, I've been trying to make way for Rotos to use the A2, but if he doesn't revive Harima now, which I'm expecting that he's gonna be smart enough to do it, but if he isn't, my Rotos is gonna destroy. Okay. 
he made a mistake. Or no, because he killed my Rodos. Okay, never mind. He didn't make a mistake. He had the A2. My, my bad. If my Rodos moved before the Narsus or he didn't have the A2, I would have won there, but I guess the Narsus got in. I, I thought I had it. I think it's over now. Yatsu does have revive. Yeah. Wukong is gonna come back, but I still can't use the A2. Okay, I, I, I lost it. I lost. No way I can win. I don't... Neither one of these two have Polymorph, so it's not like I could Polymorph Harima from the town and then win. I need to get a 6-star... 6-star six six Polymorph on UDK before he gets nerfed. Anyway, let's do one A2 just to show how little damage Wukong can do, but then I'll surrender. Yeah, UDK is so tanky that he can take many hits. Okay, how much damage can my Wukong do? Yeah, 31k. That, that's harm passive for you. And let me just quickly show you my Wukong gear, so... You don't get... Get confused that uh, my gear just sucks. That's the gear on the Wukong, that just did 31k damage. In some other scenarios, if I'm able to kill somebody and get the extra damage from the A2, and they don't have Harma passive, he can even do like 800k plus damage with the AoE, but now we did 31k. That's Harima for you against champions with uh, ignore defense and not insane multipliers like Taras. If the guy who made this thread sees this video or hears about it, I'm a little bit, uh, I feel a little bit left out because of content creators that whine about game balance, I would definitely say that I should be up there because <laughs> some people are gonna dislike it and some people get uh, like bothered that I non-stop talk about balance and specifically nerves, but I speak about that like all the time and not only do I like whine about it, but I do try to make very constructive suggestions how to do it better, not just on my videos and in like every possible Discord where I talk, but also a lot in the content creator chat. I do it a lot. Anyway. I mean, I have 6k subs, all of those other ones are much bigger than me. It is what it is. Hopefully, hopefully the live streaming, which I haven't done until now, hopefully that will be popular and I'll, I'll get more subs from it. I still really want to get access to the test server, but it's kind of hard. I, I gain subs very slowly. It, it's not easy. I only need like 1.1k more, but that could take me forever at this point, so... It's kind of like, sometimes I gain a lot in short span, and then normally I gain like, almost nothing, so... Like yesterday, I don't think I gained a single subscriber, and I think... On the day before I got like 3, and on Monday I think I got like 30 or whatever, so it's not that much. Garol, actually haven't seen Garol that much lately in live arena, even though he's very, or is, he, is the she? She's very good, she has great damage and utility with her damage coming from the A1. But it's a very squeezy champion, so as long as I can I can get turns, we can easily kill it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and by the way, Roto sucks against him, so let's go with this. 
I, I usually would want to pick like um, either one champion with Polymorph and Taras or then Rotos with Polymorph and UDK. But I don't think I, I'm gonna pick... Uh, I don't want to pick Rotos against this guy and I really want to get both Wukong and Narsus so I, I have to go this way. But he's going with that Garol who has strong A1 and does uh, like uh, ally attacks with her passive and then she's also going with Cardial that also does ally attacks so we need some kind of um, a new girls that can stand that and definitely not uh, Rotos because they will counter the passive and Stalus isn't tanky enough either. Narsus might be able to take like a couple hits. Definitely with reaction, but might even be able to do it without that. And Wukong doesn't need to, so. Should I just pick Duchess for the Polymorph? I think I'm gonna go with not Duchess instead of uh, Angora. Yeah. He does have both Harima and Cardial, and he does. <laughs> He has double ally attack with the Garol. I'm kind of almost tempted to ban the Garol, but the issue is, of course, that he has the Harima. And if I don't ban the Harima and he bans my Narsus, I have zero percent chance to win. Actually, scratch that. He's not gonna ban. He can't ban my Narsus. He has to. If he doesn't ban my Narsus, I might still be able to win with Armans and Wukong. So maybe I should actually ban the Garol, right? Yeah, I, I feel like I will be able to brute force this guy with, um, yeah, with my team. Never mind, scratch that. Let's let's let him have the Harima. They, I, I do agree. It's kind of issue for me sometimes that Harima counters me so hard because I have very limited options and it's just even in general very good. That sometimes I'm maybe a little bit too afraid of her and. I should just brute force it with my Rotos. Sometimes I made a mistake and I should have just gone with Rotos. But usually, I mean, Arima isn't brute forceable with Wukong. Not in any situation, but now it's a little bit different because we had the Armands. And Armands would be able to polymorph Arima. And we could deal it with that way, so there was no way that he was gonna ban my Narses. And with this amount of buffs, to be honest, I mean, if Narsus gets a turn, we can just block revive the Arima. He doesn't even have, uh, like, really any protection or anything, so we can easily do it. No UDK, no Necrot, no nothing. I think actually, I'm gonna go with the A1. I, I, I don't want to. I didn't want to use the Wukong A3 in case we actually, we actually stole the buffs. I think we pretty much won already. As long as I can get the turn on this Narsus, we won. He has so many buffs and I'm instantly gonna block revive him. Pretty sure I would have killed him even without the... Uh, uh, with Wukong reducing his he health, because he has so many buffs. And Narsus A3 is actually his hardest hitting skill. Higher than A2. And it scales from the buffs on you and the enemy, so... We were gonna do enough damage. And yeah, and that's it. Going pretty well today. I think we got two losses and that that one battle that doesn't count where I didn't pick a Ogre. Oh oops, my bad. I think you can hear that on video. I just accidentally like lost my keyboard. It's it's very heavy, so I just put my um what's it called? Like my mouse pad under it accidentally and it slipped and it dropped like two centimeters and made a massive noise yeah three losses but the one doesn't count so two losses and uh, every other battle we won today some of these teams were not the worst but especially the last few ones that we battled they were actually very strong teams and we were able to beat some of them Nice. 
Yeah, I, I think my new builds definitely paid off. I don't think they are better in vacuum, like going with the Wukong instead of Xena and shuffling my bills around a little bit. But I think they are what, like, um, they are better against this meta than what I was running last time. And hopefully it will go the exact same way in next Classic Arena reset and I finish top 50 or something like that. And like I said, in case you didn't know this and haven't heard, but I live streamed my next, uh, my last Platinum Arena reset push and I'm gonna do it every week from now on. And I'm also gonna stream on Friday now and probably planning to do it on every Friday in the future. So. Monday, Friday is going to be stream. You're not going to see it on the normal video section, but instead on the live section, in case you're interested. Okay, and when, I'm going to go with Wukong early on, even though almost certainly he has Harma, but we need to also be very careful when we pick Wukong against Narsus, even though it's generally a good matchup for us, but we don't want to have too many buffs and get block revived like I did against the Harima in the last battle. So I'm, I don't think I'm gonna go with uh, Daptus here. I probably would otherwise, but I can do it with uh, this matchup. Unless I ban, ban Narsus, but I don't know his last pick and probably it's gonna be local or maybe even Harima and him going with triple nuker. So I'm not gonna count on being able to ban Narsus. What should I pick? Could almost go with Mitrala here. He does have the claims from Angora, but no other immunity buff, and Mitrala will surely be annoying to him. Again, Helicat could be nice, but I would need to ban the Mikake, and he could still he could still pick a lockout or anything, so can't do that. Pretty much expecting to see either lockout or Harima. Those make the most sense at this point. I mean, he could go with Sifi. That could that would be pretty good with uh, having like double reviver and two HP scaling nukers. Okay, Ronda. That, yeah, Ronda isn't a bad choice either. It's gonna counter both of my nukers, and I don't have any revive, so kind of like Harima that this triple nuker pick does make sense. I think we're actually gonna go with the Ronda ban. Yeah. Probably otherwise I would ban the Mikake, but we do have the Mitrala for planes and we do have two polymorphs, so I think Ronda is actually a bigger issue. We, we have to go for that. Okay, let's see. Let's see what you got, SP Snake. Are you able to deal with my Wukong or not? Tara's passive is gonna demolish my Wukong, but he only does have one reviver, so it's not gonna be that big issue. If he had like Marriage Guy instead of Mikage here, and he banned, he probably would have banned my Rotos in that case, even raising the R ones. I probably wouldn't be able to win at that point. And I don't have revive, so he probably is gonna focus on my Rotos, and of course Narsus is gonna easily one-shot it with uh, A2, so it might go bad. Okay, I hope we don't proc reaction here. I really really need to be able to kill the Narsus at this point. Please die. Okay, good, good. Yeah. When you don't have Haruma passive and you don't Rock reaction, Rodos A3 does hit insanely hard. Uh, should I use the A2? I think we're gonna go for the A2 actually, because I don't think the A3 is gonna kill the Mikake, and even though we're not gonna. Angora is in the stone skin, we're not gonna be able to finish the fight, but let's do this. Oh, god damn it. That has almost died, but not quite enough. But yeah, it's it's 
gonna be able to revive that uh, that Narsus, and even if my Mikake might cut in, that's not gonna save my Rotos, I don't think. I think it's bye bye for Rotos. No way I can surely survive this. I mean, if I have defense buff and no shield, but I mean, my Rotos is pretty high age. Oh, I did survive it. Nice. I guess the defense buff does make a huge... Okay. <laughs> and then he did. Defense buff does make a huge difference. Um, it's gonna be very hard to end it at this point. Does he have a lot of polymorph? No. Oh, Taras is... But I do want to hit Taras, because if I was able to kill the Taras without hitting it on Wukong, I would lose less attack, or I wouldn't lose 10% attack on my next AoE. Uh, I think we lost it. I won't be able to finish this off with with Wukong. I needed my Rotos here. Even if I can get... I will get turns on Wukong eventually, and my UDK... Oh, my, I need to do A1 on the Taros. That was still double damage, but... He's very low, low attack on the Taros. But yeah, I, I'm not gonna be able to get this. Maybe? I, I wasn't expecting the Narsus to die there. Our attack is reduced by 20%. I'm not sure if I'm ever able to one-shot the Angora with A2 anymore. Probably not, to be honest. Yeah. 20% less attack is not a small uh, loss. It's a massive, massive loss. Yeah, okay, I survived it. Uh... UDK is very strong, but he does have shield and he's gonna take double damage next time. I don't think it's gonna take one more hit. Can my Wukong cut in now before Tar before Narsus? Ah, I don't think it's gonna cut in. Yeah, uh, that sucks. Wait, maybe he only has A1. Oh, he had A3. <laughs> okay, that's it, I guess. No? Okay. My UDK is very tanky. He's in ultra mega tanky build. And I'm even gonna put him... Right now he's... Okay, I lost. Right now he's in stone skin and reaction. But... Like I said, on next classic arena reset, I have been testing a Wukong defense without uh, Rotos. And it's obviously heavily gonna rely on the UDK Wukong team comp. I kind of shuffled both of them to work best with that and um, I'm gonna put him in two piece defiant and uh, six piece stone skin because you can do that with accessories I think that's gonna be pain for some Narsus teams especially if they don't have the best gear it's gonna hurt them it's gonna be very hard to kill my UDK who is already very tanky Usually I prefer the reaction, mainly for a live arena, but it's relevant in classic arena sometimes as well. And it's because of the George it, uh, A3. It's A3, right? Let me double check. Pretty sure that's his A3. Yeah, the George it A3 attacks one enemy, will ignore stone skin and bunch of other things and has insanely high multiplier since he like it just in general 5.7 is very high but when you ignore 100% of enemy defense 5.7 multiplier is uh, ridiculous but that can obviously one shot UDK easily if you don't proc reaction that's why I generally have run it in the past and I'm still doing right now for live arena, but I will probably switch it to two piece defiant for next reset since I'm going with the Wukong strategy. I'm basically trying to outlast them long enough that my Wukong might be able to kill them even through lockout. That was actually working on my testing, and I probably shouldn't um, expose myself too much before the reset, but of course, I'm gonna streamy then I'm gonna talk about it so who cares and may maybe it doesn't go as well on reset as it is going in my testing and in my head okay uh 
Or else it's on UD gate, I guess. I didn't check the time. This might be the last fight. Maybe time for one more or then it's the last one. We've had pretty good run today. This guy is pretty high ranking. If we can end this on a win, then I will be very happy. Okay, he went with the Wukong. Didn't let me have it. Went with Mikage as well. I guess I'm gonna have to go with Rotos. There isn't really anything else. And to be honest, um, he does have tons of debuffs. Maybe we can... Maybe Rotos is good because he does have the Polymorph. Pretty sure he's gonna ban the Armands. And if I didn't get Rotos here, I wouldn't have anybody in my team in Polymorph. So that might be bad. Interesting. He went with Staldus, who of course does have a double hit on the A2 and is a defense scaling nuker. And he does have the ally attack on Mikage. But he, I don't think this guy uh, knows me because um, I don't think he's expecting my Rotos to be in a 4 piece stone skin. We can actually pretty safely ban the Harima, I think. I'm hoping at least that the Styldos isn't gonna be Isu, but I did lose to one maybe like a week or two ago, so you never know. We don't really want to lose to Saldos, but we will see. Because he, he's so bad that even I don't really use him a lot, but of course if you're using a speed team, then it's a little bit easier to use him, and especially if the enemy team is squishy. But my team isn't that squishy. I mean, I don't have Harima. My Nukers aren't the tankiest and he does have the double hit and force affinity against Rotos. Oh, that, he hit pretty hard there actually. But I feel like I still should be able to take some hits. Okay, he almost one-shot my Staldus though, so that's pretty impressive. But we got a turn on Rotos. We're obviously gonna... Okay, that, that was... Okay. That was like the lowest damage I could do. That was without Helm Smasher proc guaranteed. And even that killed the Sifi. So we were gonna like... It would have been double damage if I procced it. Uh, I don't know if I should use A2 or A3 here. The status is at full, is at full health. I don't, I'm not sure if my... I think I'm gonna go for the A2 actually. I might regret this, but I don't think my status would get a turn. Maybe it was a mistake. Wukong is also gonna go before us. We'll see. I don't think my Stal my Narciss would have gotten a turn before Staldos. And I might have lost if that happened, but let's see. Oh, okay. Wukong did A3 and got Polymorphed. We're good. And now Rotos is gonna get a turn and we also get the revive, so we're fine. Maybe I could have lost this if I got bad RNG, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, it ended. Okay. I thought maybe maybe I could sque squeeze in one more fight, but actually, that's fine. <laughs> we ended on that glorious win against pretty powerful team. And was it three losses or? I think it was three losses, yeah. Still a pretty high win ratio today. I don't recall what points I was when we started, but I think I gained maybe like 40 plus points today, so that's that's way more than average for me, especially since I've had a couple sessions recently where I lose points, which is kind of embarrassing, meaning that you have to literally lose more battles than you win. It's gonna be worse than 50-50 if you lose points, but today we definitely did gain some points. Anyway, I'll make a video tomorrow about the blessings which we don't have in game yet i think we might have them tomorrow but i'll talk about the new blessing tree which is right now the locked one here stay tuned for that also check out my live stream on friday if that does sound interesting and 
I think that's it for my shilling. Have a nice day and see you.